Hey there YouTube, it's Nick with Feeding Fitness. So many of you have been asking for me to make a video on what's in my pre-workout, so I'm gonna go ahead and do it. Uh, if you watch any of my uh, full day of eating videos, you'll see I, I take this pre-workout many of the days before I go to the gym. Um, I make my own. Why did I start making my own? Well, there are a couple of reasons. The biggest reason, and the reason I would encourage all of you to do it, is cost. Um, I'm just making this cheaper than I can buy it. It, it is uh, significantly cheaper to make it yourself. Um, the second reason is I know exactly what's in mine. There's no proprietary blend. There's no list of secret ingredients, things I've never heard of. Too much of what I don't need, not enough of what I do need. That's kind of the third thing, I have control. I can put as much or as little of whatever ingredient I want. I have flexibility, I have control. Um, if you want to find something that has a good you know, set of ingredients, you're gonna be hampered by what's available. Here, I can just put in whatever I want. So really, that's why I'm making my own. It costs less, I have control of what's in it, and I have flexibility if I want a certain ingredient one day and I don't want it the next day. Good luck doing that with pre-workouts that you've purchased. You, you have no control. So <clears throat> that is, uh, that's why I'm doing it. So now let me tell you what I've chosen to put in it. And it's nothing fancy, nothing flashy. It's everything you need and really nothing that you don't need. Um, and I'm going to list the ingredients. I'll start off, um, well, let me just start off with creatine. Five grams of creatine monohydrate. Brand does not matter. I got this from GNC because they were running a crazy sale. I got two of these huge tubs for dirt cheap. Um, so that's why I'm using this brand. Use any brand of creatine monohydrate that you want. Um, five grams. That's it. This is not really a pre-workout ingredient, which is why I'm starting with it. It doesn't matter when you take this, but why not put it in your pre-workout so you don't have to worry about taking it any other time. Anybody who says you should take it with food, you need to take it with carbs, you need to take it, it's bullshit. You don't. Anybody who says you need to try creatine ethyl ester, creatine, bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. All you need is creatine monohydrate. There are tons and tons of peer-reviewed studies. This is the most studied supplement that's out there. Um, I'm not even going to bother going into everything creatine does. You can simply do a Google search and be provided with tons and tons of information about creatine monohydrate. Five grams every day, no loading dose, no nothing. This is one that you're going to want to buy more of than you need for your pre-workout because you're going to take this every day, not just days you work out. But why not put it in your pre-workout? One less thing to have to take. So that, that one's out of the way. I'm going to list the others in the order of like how important I kind of think they are. Um, and there aren't really effective studies comparing the ingredients to each other. Uh, that, just, that information doesn't exist. This is more just my opinion. But if you were looking to save some money and we're going to cut some things out, um, again, this is the, how I order them uh, in importance. So we're going to start with beta alanine. You will see beta alanine in just about every pre-workout that you buy. Beta alanine is responsible for that tingly feeling that many of you get from taking pre-workouts. That comes from the beta alanine. Now we're not putting it in just for tingles. Uh, beta alanine also does do some advantageous things for those of us who work out. So what's beta alanine going to do for you? It's going to increase the amount of muscular work you can do and decrease your overall fatigue. So kind of let you work a little longer, a little stronger. Um, again, I'm not going to go into great detail about what all these ingredients do. You can do your own research, but that's kind of a basic idea of what beta alanine does. And I, uh, the research doses are usually around three to five grams as being your effective dose. Now, most pre-workouts on the market are gonna have three or less grams. Um, I'm splitting the difference of three to five, and I'm just gonna include four grams of beta alanine. Um, the next one, and this is the big one, big bag here, is citrulline malate. And this is the two to one citrulline to malic acid ratio. That is the preferred ratio. So that's another thing. You know, you'll find that citrulline malate is in a lot of pre-workouts. I find that it's never ever dosed properly and that they either don't tell you what form you're getting or oftentimes you're getting the one-to-one, -one, the cheaper, less effective form. So um, I've 
gotten the two to one, and I'm going to use eight grams of this stuff. You do not find many pre-workouts on the market that are putting eight grams of citrulline malate in, but that's just what the research says, so that's what I've put in. Um, citrulline malate is another one that's going to decrease overall fatigue, increase endurance, um, so it's another good one to have. So now the next two are maybe a little less important. If you were going to skip something, you could do these. Um, first, N-acetyl-L-tyrosine. Uh, a lot of people call it NALT or NAT. Um, this one works alongside of caffeine. It's like stimulant-esque but it's not really a stimulant, um, so it works well with caffeine. Now, I know I haven't mentioned caffeine yet, I'm saving that for the very end, but there, there's a reason. Um, but I'm putting in two grams of NALT. Again, uh, you can look this uh, supplement up if you want to know more about it. And then um, we've got Alcar, which is acetyl L-carnitine. And um, this one is more, they call it like a smart drug or a nootropic. Um, it's supposed to help with your mental focus and clarity and things like that. So another two grams of this. Again, these last two, if you want to save some money, you can cut them out. I find that since you're only using two grams of each of them, they're not especially expensive to add in. So those are in there. Um, finally, the last thing I do want to talk about is caffeine. And I saved it for last for a reason. Um, this is the one you're going to want to variable, uh, variable amounts of, depending on how you feel, what you're doing, if you've taken any other caffeine. Um, it's very nice to have this one be flexible. Um, now, I will mention, when you're using caffeine powder, this is 500 grams of caffeine. Most pre-workouts carry two to 400 milligrams of caffeine. So you need to be very careful. Now I weigh all of my pre-workout ingredients on you know, my regular food scale, the same thing I'm weighing my food on, except caffeine. You cannot use this scale because it is not precise enough. I have a scale that weighs to the milligram. So I can weigh exactly how many milligrams of caffeine powder I'm using. Now, this is a safety thing, guys. If you're going to use caffeine powder, you need to get a scale like that. If you don't want to buy a scale and you still want to use caffeine, you can buy caffeine tablets, and they usually come in 200 milligram tablets. That way, you know, you can either take one, two, one and a half, however much you want. Now, the powder is just so much cheaper than the tablets are. Powder plus the scale in the long run are going to be cheaper than the tablets are. The tablets are convenient, you don't have to measure them, you don't have to use a scale, but they're more expensive. Whatever you use, it doesn't matter. Caffeine is caffeine. But here's why I find it nice to use the powder. Say I woke up, I'm going to drink a cup of coffee, and then I'm going to go to the gym and take my pre-workout. Well, is that coffee got enough caffeine for me? Then I don't have to add any. Do I want to use maybe half the caffeine I would normally add because I had that coffee? That's an option for me because I'm making my own. With a store-bought pre-workout, you're locked into whatever amount of caffeine they want to put in. Every now and then, I like to take a two-week break from caffeine, completely cut it out, uh, because that helps it become more effective. You do build up a tolerance to caffeine, and stopping use can decrease that tolerance. Um, but I, I might still want to take all my other pre-workout ingredients. Yet another reason why um, it's nice to be able to make your own. So, how do I compile all this? Do I weigh and measure it out every single time before I'm going to the gym? No, that's time consuming. So what I do is you take like a regular Tupperware container like this and you weigh out either 10 or 20 doses of your pre-workout. And like I said, I use the big scale for everything but the caffeine. I then put all the ingredients in a Ziploc bag like this, shake it like crazy, and then you need to like pinch it and work your fingers through it in case any of your ingredients have clumped. You don't want any clumps. And then once you have this all to where it's you know mixed well, it's not clumped, I put it back in that same container that I uh, weighed it out in, and this is what I dispense it in. So how much to dispense just depends on how much you made. Um, so what you do is you just tally the total number of grams all of them combined that you've put in, and then you divide it by the number of doses you made, and that's how you know how many grams of pre-workout to put um, into, your, into your bottle.
Um, again, I do not add the caffeine to that large bag. I dose the caffeine daily. That's the only one that I'm putting in every time. If you find you are fairly consistent with your caffeine, you want to add it, that's fine. But another thing, I, I mean, really, I would not add the caffeine to the large bag because it's going to be such a small amount of powder compared to all the other powders. Um, I'm not sure it's going to mix appropriately just shaking the bag. Like companies, when they manufacture things like this, they have agitators that can like guarantee um, a certain mixture and that every scoop is consistent. I'm not sure how well the shaking bag method actually works, but caffeine is the only ingredient that taking too much um, is going to be dangerous where it could actually happen. You know, if you put 20 doses of 400 milligrams of caffeine in here and somehow it all comes together and you take it all at once, that can be dangerous. All these other ingredients, if you have a few grams extra, it's not going to harm you. So really for safety's sake and just for the ability to uh, customize your pre-workout, add your caffeine individually, weigh on the scale, um, don't mix it in with the bag. So you really only have to weigh one thing every time. Um, and again, if you don't want to do that, caffeine pills work just as well, or coffee, or however you want to get your caffeine. But if you're using powder, just try and be safe. You know, there's stories out there of people um, hurting themselves from overdosing on caffeine powder. There's talks about possibly banning it. Please don't screw everybody else. Just weigh it, and then, you know, you don't have to ruin it for everyone. So, now the last thing I'm going to talk about, if you take this little bag of goodness and mix it with water, it's going to taste horrible. Horrible. So you need to do something. You can buy powdered flavoring. Um, if you wanted to mix it in the bag, I find that to be unnecessary. Um, if you're anything like me uh, or any other flexible dieter, you probably have some water enhancers laying around anyways. These work great. Put your pre-workout into the bottle, give it a little squirt. Um, I will say that citrulline malate, and especially because we're using so much of it, it has a very sour taste. So if you buy something that might be good sour, like I have blackberry, uh, cherry blackberry and blue lemonade, both of those, sour blue lemonade is a decent taste and sour cherry blackberry is a decent taste. So think of something that might taste good with a sour flavor added to it because that's how it's gonna end up tasting. So, um, all in all, I calculated this out. I think I'm around 80 cents, 80 to 90 cents per dose, um, which is cheaper than most pre-workouts. Um, it is cheaper than any pre-workout that is giving you the full dose of citrulline malate. That's the thing here. Um, this is the most expensive. If you were to cut this out of the pre-workout, this accounts for, uh, I believe, half, if not more, of your total cost. This one is expensive because we're using so much. Um, that's why you don't see pre-workouts that put it in there. So um, even if you can find a pre-workout for cheaper, I guarantee you it doesn't have the full dose of citrulline malate in it. Um, so that's that's going to be uh, the cost there. I and mean, you can get these supplements anywhere. I got mine from BulkSupplements.com. Um, it was the cheapest place to get all of them in one package. Had I broken it up and gotten different ones from different places, there were cheaper ways to do it. But then you use on shipping and blah 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 blah. I use BulkSupplements.com. You can get them from anywhere you want. Um, but for me, where I live, this was the cheapest to have it shipped to me. So that's it. Um, I'm going to include a link in the, or not a link, but just in the description, I'll include the dosages if you missed anything. Um, I'm also going to include a link to examine.com. It's one of the best websites out there to research supplements, at least a good place to get started um, if you really want to see what all of these do. And I encourage you to look that stuff up. You shouldn't just take some guy on the internet's word for everything. Um, do your own research too. I've given you a starting point, but you might want to put different ingredients in your pre-workout, different dosages. Um, and that link is a very good starting point. Um, and that's really it, guys. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Um, if you like the video or share the video, all those things really help other people find the channel. Uh, and I'm very appreciative when any of you guys do that. Questions or comments, drop them down below or over at Facebook at facebook.com upslash feeding fitness. And I'll see you guys next time.